liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Let's remain standing and think about our troops serving our country here and overseas. Thank you. Yeah. See. Okay, welcome to the uh, workshop meeting. Today is Tuesday, September 24th. The next regular, regular scheduled meeting will be on October 7th at 7 p.m. The next workshop meeting will be October 29th at 7 p.m. And the following regular village board meeting is November 4th at 7 p.m. That's the day before right. election day, so I'd like to make a motion to see if we can move that date and if anybody else has a conflict and change the meeting date from the 5th. The next it's election day. That's election six. 6th. Okay. 6th. That's a Wednesday. I'm, I'm fine in any case, but I'm curious what would be the problem with having the day before election we usually don't have village board meetings the day before election day. Um, maybe uh, people have campaigns. Politics and stuff. I don't, right. I don't know. I'm just trying to understand the reason. Okay. Thank you. 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 Okay, November 6th. Yes. Yes. Mr. Ellsworth, you need you Mr. need Mayor, to present. Quickly, because you need to leave. Is that no, correct? I don't need to do anything quickly, Mayor. But I would appreciate. It. I I don't want to rush through my client's um, presentation, but the sooner I get up, the better. Okay, so you're on. I am. How's that, Mr. Mayor? Board members, thank you. Uh, as informal as I can get, um, the um, my client Neil Mead Inc. had presented a petition to the Village Board approximately two years ago, seeking under your code a change to your zoning law, uh, specifically to allow um, residential apartments above commercial um, establishments in the uh, GB1 or GB zone, is it the general business zone. I believe CB. CB, CB, excuse me. Uh, that petition per your code was um, referred to your planning board for review and report back to the village board. Uh, the process was somewhat lengthy and, and, and appreciated, particularly with respect to the uh, research that your then planner did regarding um, our petition and whether it should um, be considered. And as you know, there were two reports. There was one with respect to um, our initial petition, and then there was a second much more lengthy report uh, that I believe you all have and I have, uh, both of which um, acknowledge the fact that the zone was changed some time ago, in fact before Mr. Lang was, was even um, retained by this village uh, for a reason he was unaware of. But he also acknowledged in his, in his report that it appears based upon the changing tone and dynamic of downtown areas that the petition had uh, merit. Uh, certainly wasn't telling this board what to do. Um, so we had referred back in the, um, to the planning board and the planning board based upon that and a much shorter report back to you, I uh, recommended that it be considered. It has been some time, I know, there had, we haven't had a lot of discourse over the past uh, year and a half um, with respect to that and that's reasons uh, uh, that my client had not to push the issue. But at this point, uh, his concerns are 
as are many concerns of the local businessmen who I'm not speaking for, that they have empty spaces above their, above their um, commercial establishments. And they have uh, a heavy burden with respect to uh, the overhead maintenance of those properties. Uh, something that Mr. Lang pointed out in his report. The, the question um, presented to the board and the request to this board was not to change the zone to make it um, a permanent use, but to change the code to allow for special permits um, for residential units above those particular commercial ones. The, the makeup of the village, uh, as, as anyone knows who lives here, is a, is a checkerboard pattern, so to speak, of, of residents above and commercial or empties above. There's, no, there's really no um, particular rhyme or reason other than the fact that the residences above are those pre-existing non-conforming that are still there from way back when the code was changed. Uh, so those property owners who were, I guess, had the foresight to realize that that residences were the thing of the future, kept them there. And the property owners who had the insurance agent and the lawyer and the uh, accountant and whoever else back in the day um, would have those offices above the stores where the clients could walk up. And quite frankly, in my practice, three quarters of my clients can't walk up three stairs, let alone a dozen. So those business owners who were renting had to leave. Their, their clientele couldn't, couldn't really get to the second floor. So now you're faced with business owners who have empty space and are still paying taxes on the full space. And, and, and obviously that's a concern of the business owners, but I think it should be a concern of the village. <clears throat> because if you lose those people, they're going to be not only empty above, it's going to be empty below. Um, and in order to bring in enough revenue for those business owners to pay their taxes, and to make a living, make a profit. The second stories of these commercial resident, uh, commercial establishments should be considered for the special permit. Uh, we could talk all nightmare, but I think you know the gist of, of, the, uh, of our purpose here, and I think our argument is, is fairly sound when it comes to the need for this uh, special use permit. I ask the village under your code to, at the very least, put it to a vote at a regular meeting, schedule a public hearing. Your code would require that. And then after the public hearing, at least give my client the opportunity, even if it's turned down, to take the next step. We are kind of stagnant here, and I think you understand that. If the village board fails to act, um, my, my client's rights are somewhat limited. If it acts and is contrary to what my client wants, my client's rights are a little more um, strengthened. So I appreciate uh, the board's consideration. Okay, so if we have that information, the board will consider the um, presentation and bring it before a vote at a special um, at the next village board meeting. If you're prepared, um, we'll discuss it further. We can contact the zoning or planning attorney with any further questions. And that was what, what meeting would that be? I would say this meeting coming up. That will be. I we'll never attend your meetings, Mayor. So I never know when that is. Oh, it's on the uh, October 7th. October 7th, thank you. It's a Monday. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we have enough time. You, you've got to be sure if you won't want to do it. I think Mr. Ellsworth kind of just indicated he'd like you to vote it down. <laughs> He'd, he'd like you to vote well, for it, but if you vote it down, then he can just as an agenda. challenge it. Just as an agenda, right? And we could bring it, you know, we can we can bring the petition before the village board and vote on it. Well, well, I don't know if that would do that. Yeah, I, I, maybe we can talk about it. All right, we'll talk about time. it some more. So we'll work on that one too. Yeah. We can I'm not about. expecting a vote. I certainly would like it, but I'm not expecting a vote. I just would like it to... to Proceed forward and not stay stay in the same place. We'll put it on the agenda for Monday and we'll discuss for yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Board. Thank you. Okay. Chief. 
Done. And, uh, just a couple things tonight. We have Brian Dorsey. He's going to be an over 18 member for the host company. We have a motion to, um, so we want to add Brian Dorsey onto the insurance. Yeah. For uh, over 18 for the host company. We have a motion. Motion. Have a second. Well, we can do this on Monday. We can do this on Monday. We'll do it on Monday. I'm sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, do we mutually agree with what Allendale? Uh, yes. Just gave me a I just Run briefly down. mentioned to the chief that I have a, a draft ready for review with him. I'm going to be sending it to him tomorrow. There are some things that we need to discuss uh, in terms of that draft document to before we're ready to uh, bring it forward. And so I'll start that conversation with him tomorrow um, about about the, the draft that we have so far. Okay. And uh, uh, the new truck, uh, the truck committee, uh, the specs should be back. It's going to be very close to having it for your for the meeting on the seventh. It will be that, or even shortly thereafter. I know you discussed. You said you wanted us to give you a presentation. Mm -hmm. When would you like that, or how would you like us to? You, you have a special meeting for that? Are we doing it at the next workshop? How would you like to? Well, actually, you can give me the presentation or whoever's available to the board, and then we can present it after that, and you know, and work it up in a workshop also, so the whole board has a. The concept okay, of so when we get it, we just go over it with Yeah, you, you can go over it with me first, absolutely. Okay. And, and then, then, we'll, then we'll present it to the board at the next workshop. Okay, that sounds good, because it should be, you know, maybe here for the meeting, but, it, right. you know, it's going to be very close. Okay. And uh, that's all I have. Great job on the brush fires the other day. <coughs> yeah, the guys did a lot of work up there on the hill. Right. How many hours were you there? Uh, well, they were there about four hours the first day and four hours right. the second day, you know. Took quite a bit to come up and down that mountain there mm -hmm. to get it out. The problem now is, you know, this type of this in the fall here, the brush fires they kind of burn. They almost they get underground kind of, mm -hmm. so they really don't go out. And they just, it's not that you didn't put out what you saw. It's that it's buried under the ground and then it works its way back out again mm -hmm. in the fall. They do that until you get to you start getting. Do you think it might have started? Do you think it was? I have no idea. I was saying, do you think someone? You know, started it. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. I have no idea. There's no way to know. So, but I've seen mulch just combust. Yeah, mulch does it. You know, decomposition. And just yeah. comp, right? Yeah. yeah. And it just gets hot up there. You know, beats in the sun for sure. the afternoon, and that's it. And how, how did you get up there? I wasn't just sure. climb it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's steep right there behind those houses. Yeah. That's the only way to get there. Sure. So. I saw pictures. But they wound up getting it. So. I didn't know how to do it. All right. Yeah. So, thank All right. you very much. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Avon. Yes. Welcome. Good evening. All right. Hello. Uh, once again, I'm Seth Mandelbaum from McCullough Goldberg and Stout. Uh, on behalf of Avon, Michelle Dory, you all know, no one love is here again yeah, from yes. Avon. Um, so we're here again this evening uh, just to follow up on the discussion at your September 9th meeting. Um, there was a question at that meeting about sort of precedent and, and have pilot agreements uh, been amended elsewhere in the state. So I have a new associate who's not admitted yet. I can't really bill for his time for most things, but he's really good at researching on Google. And um, I submitted to you a letter which went through a lot of different types of examples. And I, I frankly did, when that question was asked of me, I really didn't know myself. Um, so I think we gave you a lot of good information. The most relevant example I thought was in 2016, and, and Rob Agrino might know about this if, if he was in Ornerstown at that time, uh, there was an amendment of, of a pilot uh, which under very similar facts, where there's about a 33 acre parcel and about nine acres were taken out of the pilot to be sold off after they were subdivided and all the taxing jurisdictions uh, consented. Um, for Subaru next door to use for an expansion. Um, so a very similar situation um, as this one. I also gave other examples from around the state, um, both where companies unfortunately left the state and terminated their pilot. Um, there are examples in, in Westchester in upstate, um, and upstate, and an example again right here in Rockland where Olympus Camera Company came to Manuet in 2003 inside the pilot, but then six years later move back to Jersey and terminate the pilot. Um, and then more recently, uh, in April of 2019, 
uh, Niagara County, uh, Verizon Media amended a pilot for an expansion project and also to transfer 1.6 acres of the original project uh, real estate to a third party company. So I think the concern was, has this happened elsewhere? It clearly has. Um, and uh, I hope that information is helpful. Um, I also just wanted to let you know I've been, we've been keeping Steve Perath and his attorney Brian Quinn up to date um, since, as I mentioned, in August, the Rothman IDA uh, discussed this at their meeting and said they really have no objection, but of course they want to hear from the village and the school district and the town. And um, I talked to Brian today about sort of logistics, uh, because as you've heard from Michelle and myself, uh, Avon senior leadership is a lot of pressure on us. Maybe it is your problem, maybe it isn't, but it's our problem uh, to try to sell this asset by the end of the year. Um, and, and the calendar is starting to get very short, as, as we all know. So what Mr. Quinn told me is once I can tell him that, and I hope we can sort of have a dialogue about this tonight, um, that each of the taxing entities conceptually is okay with this concept. I don't know if you are or aren't, but I'm happy to. I hope we can talk about it. He will circulate a draft amendment to the pilot agreement. And frankly, he kind of already has it from the Orangetown model. You just have to update the details. Um, to you, the school district, um, and, and the town, for your review and for your consideration. So what I was hopeful you might consider is since you have a meeting coming up on October 7th, I confirm with Brian that if I tell him tomorrow that this board is conceptually okay, you can get that to your council and to the board in advance of your October 7th meeting, as well as the school district, which happens to also be meeting on October 7th because of your before. Uh, I think Ramapo meets a little bit, the town board meets a little bit later in October. Um, so that's pretty much our update. Um, we're, we're here really just to talk to you, see if you have any further questions, and see if you're in a position as a board to consider uh, taking action on October 7th. Um, much like the last applicant, although we're optimistic and hopeful that the action will be to consent to the amendment, if for some reason it isn't, we, we kind of need to know that sooner rather than later also. But again, we really hope that uh, taking a look at sort of the big picture here, for all the reasons we've talked about, I'm not going to go back to put in writing, and we've right. talked about them for many months now. Um, we're hopeful that it's a, a positive result. All right. Well, thank you for the update. I don't sure. know if any of the other board members have any questions in regards to the Avon and amending of the pilot agreement. The only thing that I can make is a comment since I was the one that um, raised the issue of prior mm -hmm. amendments to pilots. And I read over your information. The one thing that I did notice was that all of those amendment agreements did include like a known entity, like for example with the Subaru. Mm -hmm. So the parceling out of that existing pilot agreement, there was a reason to do it and at least then the board had some information of another company taking it over, mm -hmm. using the property and hopefully staying there with longevity. That's not the situation we have here. Mm -hmm. We can't market the property until we get title to the property. Right, that's sort of the. Chicken but do you, you do have a firm offer? We have multiple parties that are interested. Multiple. Mm -hmm. And we can't do anything until we actually physically have title. In other words, we don't have, we can't sign a contract right. because we don't own the property, the IDA does. More recently, as I talked about at the last meeting. Could you, could you, could you sell it without the amendment? No, we don't own it. That, that's really the rub here. Um, the, the more recent ones are straight lease transactions where it's a lease and a sublease back. But even in that case, you still need consent. Um, so you certainly. can't violate the amendment, the, the, uh, the pilot? There's no way to violate it? We're, we're hoping to not break an agreement that we have with six different entities. Right. Okay. Um, no, I'm just saying that. Avon has no intention of violating. That. But I'm saying that there's a potential that you could. 
we well, there, absolutely but no you have no intention do of doing it. Okay, <laughs> right. And, and there, and frankly, there are huge penalties built into these agreements. Right. Um, monetary penalties mm -hmm. um, that we hope don't come into play because we're asking the different entities to consent based on our offer to continue the payments. But as you remember, our original discussion was, can we extract from those payments a proportional share equal to about 16%? And the village and the school district both very firmly said, no, we want, it, we want those numbers to stay the same until this agreement is over. Um, so we, we backed off on that and confirmed that those payments are those payments. And as you know, depending on what entity ultimately you buy it, the taxes could certainly go, go up on the nail and down parcel uh, once it's separately assessed, depending on, on where it ends up. But to answer your question, yes, in theory we could violate the pilot, but we have no intention of doing so. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? <clears throat> you mentioned that there's several interested parties. Um, so that implies that you've discussed with other with multiple parties, you know, the, the, the ones that are expressing interest, you know, this property. So you're able to, so you're discussing the property but not able to actually complete the sale. But do you have, you know, essentially any firm offers, so to speak, at this point for what if it were to be available, you know, like are you, you reached that point or is it just like, oh yeah, we're interested or we're interested, they're interested, they're, you know, different parties. Has multiple offers. Offers, physical offers. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I think Seth and I had actually discussed, and uh, I leave to you how, if and how we want to answer this, but if maybe what the positives for the village would be in agreeing and the negatives in not agreeing. I don't know, you know how much you want to get into that. or It's all positive, there's no negative. <laughs> all, <laughs> all right, that's the answer. That's a real point. <laughs> well, that's a lie. Well, there's, there's a couple of issues. I, I, sort of the, the big picture issue is we have this pilot agreement that goes, I double checked, it actually goes from May 31st, 2025. And we're in tax year 16. It's a little funky because, as you all know, the town, the school district, the county all have different tax years. Mm -hmm. uh, but essentially, it, the hard expiration date is May 31st, 2025. Uh, and the payments are set forth in the agreement and they escalate every year uh, till the end. It, it'll be almost 700,000 total. I don't remember the exact number. Um, so the positives are you have certainty. Everyone knows what the taxes are coming in. The school district was very firm about it. They said, look, we, the reason we do pilots is we can budget for that number. We know we're not getting a tax cert uh, on, on the property. In this case, the R&D, the main parcel, uh, the nine or so acres that we left over, um, are still subject to the pilot. Everyone knows what the taxes are going to be. You know what your share is. Well, you always know what your share is. Um, and our, Michelle's charge and her team is to monetize assets. That's what we've talked about. If the live facility has been sold, this would identify the nail down parcel. It's identified as, as another asset that the company uh, would like to monetize. We did talk about the financial struggles the company has had over the last several years. Um, so Avon is trying to raise as much cash as possible and maintain this R&D facility in the, in the village's offer as long as, as possible. And certainly the intent is to keep it there as long as, as long as they can. And we talked about this other company from Brazil that is interested in buying the company. Um, it's in its early due diligence stages. We have no idea if that's gonna go anywhere or when it's gonna go anywhere, but, but the, those discussions are ongoing. Um, but my understanding, and I'm sure you can speak to this, this sale certainly doesn't hurt It actually the situation, increases right? the Avon's value for the potential purchaser. So the more money we have on the books, the more money right. that we can obtain from the purchaser of our organization. So that ultimately is what's driving this to close before the end of the year, because the the sale of the company is supposed to close the first quarter of 2020. So this is really what's driving my senior management team to sell off this underutilized asset. So we are, they're very much pushing me to move forward with this. 
And the other positive, which is a potential positive, I'll word it that way, um, depending on who the ultimate purchaser is, um, you know, the pilot was done in 2003, and it kind of projected out taxes, but I, as I mentioned at the, at the last meeting, I just took a look at the current assessment, which I was able to find on the Town of Ramapo Assessor website, and we have someone in my office who does tax certs, both for municipalities and, and private, and he kind of crunched the numbers, and, and it was clear that the, as we sit here today, the proportional taxes for this lot are significantly higher than what they would be under the pilot payment. So there's a potential, again, depending on the, the uh, status of the entity that ultimately buys the property, there, there's quite an, an upside potential um, for, from a tax perspective, again, depending if uh, an entity, a private entity wants to use it for a current, uh, a current warehouse type use or some other use that's permitted, um, that's an investment into a facility that's basically empty, mean jobs for the village, mean jobs for the county, these are, these are all positive uh, economic benefits, whereas right now it's just sort of sitting there uh, as a storage facility. Yes, and really is not being used very much by Avon. All the jobs are at the, the main part of the facility. And that is not planning on changing. If anything, it would drop. Under Natura, uh, Natura Brazil. That is the hope, yes. That is the hope. Is there any indication that may be happening? Like I, I can't say one way or the other. I, I, the, the hope and the potential is there. Right. But we can't sit here today and tell you right. defend it because we, are, we don't know. A little more in February now. <laughs> that is the first quarter of 2020. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. No? All right. Thank you. So we'll present, uh, we'll talk some more. Right. I, I think that the, I think that the board uh, needs to have discussion with council, get some legal advice, have some legal questions answered for them before it's ready to indicate to you in which direction it, it's um, looking to bring this forward in terms of the next um, public board meeting. Okay, would it be helpful hurtful or neutral if I asked Brian Quinn to circulate a draft pilot amendment for just the generic document prior to your next meeting? Or is it kind of... of no I, I would say neutral. <laughs> that, 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 would, would, that would be difference. my response. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess our concern is then hopefully you're comfortable on October 7th voting generally to authorize uh, we're, would there be a situation where, and I'm asking this, because different boards do this differently, if you're in favor of it, would you consider authorizing the mayor to sign whatever document Mr. Quinn presents, subject to review by council, so we don't have to come back again for your November now 6th meeting? Because now we're getting close to the end of the year, and if I am going to be able to close a deal, I need to move to forward. To be able to sign a contract. The, the, board, ha the so. board has taken action before where it has uh, made the, the, the uh, given the authorization to the mayor subject to review by council. So that has happened uh, before. And, um, and there's been other instances where the document is in hand and you don't need to do that. Right, um, which is why I suggest the maybe group. Right, so, so it's been done either way at times. Okay, but it doesn't sound like it really makes, it doesn't change anything really. The vote is gonna be Either we're in favor of this or not on October 7th, and the document just kind of favors it. Yeah, yeah. right. I don't know that it helps that it would be in our hands beforehand. I mean, it would speed things up, but I don't know that it helps with the board's decision. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's what I would call it neutral. Assuming you, but if you sent it, I guess, you know. Yeah. I mean, assuming you were rejected. You handled the Orange Town deal. That, that's. I didn't handle the Orange Town one. Oh, you didn't? Okay. It's basically just an amendment to the pilot that all the entities signed. That, has a bunch of whereas clauses explaining why it's being amended. It says everyone, all the different entities have consented, and now therefore the property described in Schedule A is now removed from the pilot. I mean, that's essentially. I think true. the board fully understands that portion yeah. of the amendment. You know, circulating the draft letter is, um, I, I believe that yeah. we all understand that part yeah. of it. Okay. Um, I think they need further discussion of council from the attorney. Right. That's what I would say. I can say to you that I'm hesitant 
because it's too much of an unknown. As I said before, that Orange Town pilot amendment specifically named an entity that was purchasing, mm -hmm. taking over. But any entity that buys it would have to, first of all, have the financial wherewithal to buy it, and would have to propose a use that either continues an existing non-conforming use or proposes a permitted use. Um, so I'm not sure why that's relevant. It, it, it's going to be sold to an entity that can buy it. Well, because it, it's, it's a complete crapshoot on our part. Mm -hmm. If we say yes to you, all right, you've had multiple offers, maybe they'll close, maybe they won't, maybe it'll just sit there. Um, it's just sitting maybe there Maybe it'll now. get sold. Yeah. Maybe it's just it won't. sitting there now. Mm -hmm. Sitting there properly maintained. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys maintain it well. There would be no non-conforming use at this point. No there is no non non There is no existing non-conforming use right. at this point. It is. It would have to be a a conforming use because it is sitting for more than six months. Well, actually, the building inspector issued a memo as part of a subdivision that said the warehouse use is continuing and may continue, and it's being used right now for right. storage. Storage and warehousing. So that, that was confirmed in the CB zone. That was in the CB zone? Though? Yes. Yeah, there was a lot of confusion about what zone we were in. Your map shows it in. Right. Your map shows it in. Right. Zone. Right. It is a CB. But the, the, yeah, there is a memo okay. as part of the subdivision that confirmed the existing uh, warehouse use it is continuing to make it in. That was at least the, word, the words of that memo were pretty clear. Uh, so, you know, potential purchasers are, are relying on uh, the building inspector's written memo. So if that's changed, that's something we would definitely need to know. I, I will, I'll talk to Steve tomorrow. Okay. And I'll, yeah, I'll just let you know. Just yeah. You know what, it was sort of buried in the minutes. It was the memo that went into the minutes from the June 12th meeting. Okay. It was an amended, there was a second version of it that said that. Second version. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. So right, right now the only concern is who we could potentially be selling? No, that's not the only concern. No. 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 But all I clearly see is how it can benefit you. I don't necessarily see how well, it clearly benefits Well, Avon saying and Suffern definitely benefits. Well, well, if, well if, we, if, if, if just say hypothetically we don't amend the agreement, we don't agree to it, I don't think Avon's going to pick up and move. We may not pick up and move, right. but it will be a lot more difficult for us to sell the the business. On that one parcel? It's a significant amount of money. Mm -hmm. To which you have multiple offers. And it's not even on the market. It's a prime location. Or right. that it is. I, th I think we hear your concerns and we'll have to talk internally. You're going to talk yes. internally. And yes. To the extent council can share with me kind of where this is heading going into October 7th. If you know, that would be helpful. If it's going to be a, a dramatic three to two vote uh, that night, uh, that's always exciting and it gives me an ulcer. Um, but uh, we'll see if there's any, I don't know how much further information we can share. We'll have to talk internally and, okay. and see where we are on that end. Great. All right. But if there's any other information we can provide short of who the buyer is, which I'm not sure we're at liberty to disclose, but I think we have to. Talk about that. You know, we we, uh, we tried to do this in a very systematic way over the last six months, and uh, I understand there's some concern about the unknown, but we're we're stuck also because of the way that pilot is structured um, with, with the idea of owning the property. Um, we felt this. I'm talking to the IDA and speaking to different representatives from every entity, this seemed to be the most efficient way to be able to sell the property. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you.
Um, Kathy. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. So a few things that we have coming up in the month of October. Uh, first is Saturday, um, September 28th. Connor School is at the Mike Rodeo. She is going to that. And Connor School is going to be going right after Grid Mary. It's very early. It's yeah. early it started, which that's what they decided on. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Um, so that's a Saturday. We were able to work with Westchester Medical Center and obtained 135 helmets for them. So the kids are going, anyone that goes to the uh, bike rodeo will get free helmets, which is a nice thing for the kids at Connor School. Uh, starting in two weeks, uh, yoga for beginners will be in the community center Monday evenings, October 7th, 21st, 28th, and November 4th at 6.30. We have two nutrition workshops coming up Tuesday the 1st during the day. And then one in the evening, uh, the workshop is October 2nd at 7 p.m. That's a Mexican cooking class. Uh, that wasn't on the agenda, my apologies. Uh, Walking Wednesdays is starting. So the self-guided tours are going to be October 2nd, 9th, 16th, and the 23rd at 10 a.m. That's the one here around the Village Loop. Uh, if anyone would like to host a Walking Wednesday and be the guide for the afternoon or the morning, please let me know. We would welcome that. Uh, Halloween window painting is Saturday the 12th at 10 a.m. at the window shops. We have 15 groups that have signed up and we just put the notice up the other day. So we expect that to be a nice turnout again as it has been in the past. Uh, we work with the Chamber of Commerce with that. They have offered again, thankfully, that they will give the prizes for the kids. Uh, the Repair Cafe, as I mentioned before, it's something that the county hosts and Suffern is the representative for the town of Ramapo, so we are excited to, to host them on Sunday the 20th at 10 to 2 in the Community Center. Uh, the Halloween Parade is coming up October 27th at 2 p.m. up Lafayette. Uh, Bruce Simon, here's an agenda item for you. Not Just Battery Saturday is coming up November 2nd. I have out on the table here um, by the community, by the um, recreation office a container for batteries if anyone has any batteries in the village hall that you want to put in there. Uh, the Wise Beginnings is going to have a craft show at the community center on Sunday the 3rd at 11 o'clock. And then, believe it or not, Christmas, Saturday, December 7th, 6.30 is the Christmas parade and visits with Santa. And then Sunday, December 8th, will be the Pearl Harbor Ceremony uh, at 2 p.m. in the auditorium. Uh, I didn't add in here, we have Tootsie. The tickets just went on sale on Monday, and we have already halfway sold out. So if anyone's looking to go to Tootsie, the date is November 23rd. We have opened it up to Village of Suffering Residents first, and then starting on Monday, it's opened up to Village of Suffering non-residents non-residents of Village of Suffolk. So the 30th will open it up and we do expect to sell on that one. So it's going very quickly. We're very excited for that. One um, item that came up, we put the information out for the yoga and for the nutrition class in these schools. We put it on the backpacks. We're getting so much want for the, the mayor's wellness program. So a good dilemma has coming up and that's something that maybe we can discuss tomorrow before the before the board meeting on uh, next Monday. Do we want to start charging for village um, events? It's come up in the past. We've talked about it. Um, the nutrition workshop is a perfect example that's coming up. And the um, yoga for beginners. Do we want to look at opening up these programs to non-residents? Well, I believe some non-residents already attend, and that maybe is something that we should look at for, for a charge. Yes, OK. You know, I don't know how the boy feels, but initially, um, you know, I think that non-residents should be there should be a small fee associated with it, depending on what we're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. But that would be a discussion that we should, we should definitely have. I would agree. Uh, non-residents. Uh, I mean, yeah. there, are there any situations off the top of your head where non-residents attending are shutting out the village residents? Are, are doing what, I'm sorry? Or maybe because more non-residents are attending, maybe it's shutting out the opportunity from village residents? It's or? not necessarily shutting it down, out. It's Nancy Christopher, who runs the wellness program, has really come up with some great ways for people to come in. Um, she's gotten really great attendance at these events. The senior workshops, the senior events that we have, she's turning it into a positive for the groups that if you are not a village resident, but you are a member of the a village, 
If you are a resident of the town of Ramapo, you have to join a senior group, a senior club, and that's benefiting them, and it's also benefiting us. In the past, whenever you did stay for it, for example, a chair exercise or any of the programs at the center, you had to be a member of a town club. So she's we're benefiting the clubs by having people join that. So that's one way that they're able to do our programs, but now we're getting people that don't want to join a club or want to come to yoga or come to nutrition or come to other things, which is a plus for you, Mayor, that the Mayor's Wellness Program is really, really booming. So we just have to figure out if we do want to do it for, because the, the reason I'm bringing it up, the yoga class is not for seniors specific, it is for adults. So that's where this one kind of starts. Do we want to you can, you can go back to also the, the trip, the Broadway trip, where it was open to all, you know, anyone, right. and we were, the residents were getting bumped out. They so don't. then so we did priority. make that change mm -hmm. to residents mm -hmm. first, residents so maybe. maybe we could structure something depending on the, the amount of people that are in the class, yeah. suffering uh, residents so first, right. and then non-residents with an associated fee or something like that. Right. That's how, something how do we that determine that by the driver's license? Or that ultimately again. would be the end. We try to well, we make a resident card with respect to the pool. I know. Yeah, we have yeah. to. So why resident. don't we do just if you want to go to yoga or whatever, you have to get your resident card, mm -hmm. and you yeah. have to bring it with you and show it. Yeah, we do mm -hmm. have in that room for those of you that don't know. We have the IDs right in the room to do. Mm -hmm. So that is an opportunity. We have all the hardware <clears> for it. We've got the badges. We could do it. We would have to set up some kind of timing to do like the, the passes, but I think it's an opportunity. I think we could bring revenue in and still continue doing the program. So just something, again, that it kind of just came up today because we got it on the electronic backpack and we got a ton of calls from people that want to come to the yoga class, but we're torn about how we structure it so it's not too, when we have it outside at the gazebo, it's an easy fit. It's big enough, we don't really have to, do any capacity, but when it gets inside, we have capacity issues and other things. So mm -hmm. it's good problems, but those are things that I thought I would just bring up tonight while we're talking. I got one question. I don't know if I should come on by you first. But, but the speaker for Pearl Harbor Day, did you, you think about that? No, I didn't give that any thought yet. Have you got anybody in mind? I do not. I have people in mind, but it's something that I guess we can, we can we discuss right, that we'll tomorrow. Talk. Okay. Yeah. Are the people that are having inquiry, was it for the evening classes? For the... Um, for the yoga for beginners? Yeah, yeah. It's the evening classes, mm -hmm. yeah. How about something like Bad the Battery Sunday, like if someone were to come in from, I don't know, you know, Airmont or something, I mean, is it open just to suffering residents? Or? Well, that I think we welcome because they're coming and yeah. going. They're dropping off goodies for us to collect and yeah. get So that's just open. Thing. Okay, I'm just asking in case. Yeah, because yeah. that's really not something we're, hope, like we're not, doing anything besides collecting items in. So Bruce, I think we could can do want to open it up to anybody, correct? Oh, a friend asked me already, and I said, I'm not going to be checking IDs. That's, as that's as you have cars, no, yeah. for, for a very simple yeah, reason. Right. If you have cars pulling into the parking lot, we don't want any more traffic, any more slowdown than is already going to happen. So the goal is to get the cars in, take out of the cars, and get them out. Adding more time to that impacts and hurts the event. Right. So we have to kind of make a decision and my decision was and, and we never did this in the past just whoever shows up with something to drop off let them in there's no money in that like we are not, not taking like a penny from any person that drops off anything well i meant you know, when the village takes stuff to the transfer point in hillbrown but this is not involved with that. the village does the recycling with uh that's a conversation that we should have with charles and with joe I don't know what the benefit will be, except that it will lessen our garbage load, which we pay by the ton. So there may not be a straight cash payment to the village for what is recycled, but there will be a lessening of the outlay on the back end. So and there is a plus. the environment. Yes. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Okay. Kathy, could we please make sure that, like all of these events, get onto Facebook because we don't have any of these events listed right. coming up. Right. You know, should do it complete through the end of the year. Yeah. I think know, we really have to yeah to step up the marketing of the of the campaigns, the Facebook campaign or the constant yeah. contact. I see that the town of Ramapo puts out like one every Friday. 
Friday. They put one, I'm not saying to do yeah. that, I'm just, you know, making, looking at it, uh, an observation. They, they put one, something out every Friday with all of their events, I think, for the week. Okay. So I know I get it every Friday and uh, right, the uh, as well. Okay, we can we can definitely come up with a schedule. Yep. And what about the winter uh, Clifford Theater? Is that gonna I move decided forward? not to go forward with that. That wasn't something we budgeted this year, so we're not gonna go forward with it. Um, the amount of money was very I thought a you know, good amount to bring a program in, but the late game i didn't want to even attempt to bring it in this year um clifford theater i do have to say i'm so proud that we are almost at a zero balance which in my my years and many years before that it's never happened uh, there's two amounts that we're going to be returned this coming week michael you'll probably get two uh, two things down from nancy this week so right uh, two dollar amounts one is a um, balance that was returned, a um, deposit I should say, and then one there was another amount that should not have been charged against Clifford, but regardless, we are at a, such a minimal balance, minimal dollar amount that I'm going to keep it as is so we see how well we did this year, and then we can look to do this program next year. So we're not going to, I'm not going to pursue that that uh, opportunity. So you don't have a lot of money in we Clifford? Have I thought you were flush. We were we were flush. So the way Clifford works, if we have a ninety-five hundred dollar uh, start, Michael, please correct me. If I'm uh, let me let me explain how it works. In the in the budget for the Clifford Theater, you provide for the expenditures, the village spending up to nine thousand dollars for Clifford. What happens is they get donations and contributions, whatever, for the Clifford Theater during the year. And as Kathy mentioned. And most years you're getting about half of that, maybe 4000 4500 if you're lucky. Right. Sometimes um, you're eligible for a state grant, like a member item of two or $3,000 that helps as well. So you never really cover all the cost, but this year came very close within a few hundred dollars, right. and maybe right. a little less if we have to give some of it back. But the bottom line is it's not where it brought in more money than what you anticipated to spend. So... Mm -hmm. The benefit here is if um, this money comes in, it helps offset that cost. So even though you raised the money originally in taxes, it now goes back into mm -hmm. the general fund and helps for next year mm -hmm. when you're doing Clifford Theater mm -hmm. for 9000 Okay. And then the other item on my agenda is the resolution to authorize the fireworks from Suffern Day from this past Saturday. So I don't have a copy of the resolution. I don't know if there's... I have it. Yeah, we'll approve. We'll uh, we'll vote on this on Monday when the, at the meeting, right? And I would like to say for supper day, I want to thank everybody that helped out on the new tent. It was a wonderful effort from everyone. We really appreciated the help. As you can see, our rec board and members are very few and far between. But who was there really helped out so much. So we appreciate. I really appreciated your help. Mr. Curley, I appreciate your help on your whole other food tent, so thank you for that. But supper day was fantastic. The evening went from the beginning, the day went from the morning to the very end of the night, flawlessly. So, Chief, we did a beautiful job. Thank you, no, Catherine was, Shores. Yeah, it was a great day. Thank you. Yeah, it was. Uh, thank you to Recreation and everyone involved. DPW did an outstanding job. DPW Please, Tom, was, and uh, yeah. DPW always does an outstanding job, you know. They really do. Um, <coughs> Police, fire, recreation, everyone that was there, the board, thanks to the great job. It really was. It was a community. Mike school, Curley. Actually, can't forget Mike Curley. People that worked at Food Tent. Mike, uh, <laughs> the other Mike, Mike Moon and Mike Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the M, M Square <laughs> over there. M Square. M Square. Also, the street fair the week before was great, too. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and the street fair. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. And that's it. All right. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Chief Osborne. And, and I know you guys were just talking about the outreach and the social media. I think one of the things you may want to push is one thing we haven't really done. I think the last post we had was like a year and a half ago on Instagram. I think we may want to set up a new page, maybe called Suffering Village. I'd be glad to do it to set you guys up because that hits a whole other crowd than Facebook. Can you? Can get? Yes, I would love to do that. I, I, I think the old one was Village, the Village of Suffering, which was. A while ago, I don't know who's the password who uh, 
had said, I know originally I was helping out, but I think it was taken over a couple times. I think we should really just start a new one, and I have no problem. I just think it's time because it's. I think it's something we can just branch out to all different group. And we can have different users, right? Yeah. Different well, administrators or whatever they're called. You can. I, I think I'd be happy to set up, sit down a couple of you, set it up with you. Right. I, I've done it for other police departments. I set up most of the department Facebook pages in the county. They come to me. I set them up as a courtesy. The whole thing, get it going. Our page is extremely active, obviously. We have an Instagram page on the police department that I use. So if you'd like me to do it, I think I would be more, I'd be more than willing yes. and happy to do it for the village of Suffolk. Yeah, so let's sit down, Kathy, and uh, I'll sit down with you and, and Chief, yep. and maybe Nancy, because she really handles a lot of that. Yes. The, right? Yeah, okay, I just figured yeah. this while I was up, I'll help you out whatever I can do. Sure. No problem, the least we can do. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you my report Monday, so take you any more of your time and repeating uh, what I'm going to say now Monday. Just basically a lot of stuff going on. We made a lot of major events. The fire parade, we took care of our 27 traffic posts. Fortunately, the fire police sent us a lot of help. It is a massive undertaking for the police department because we're the ones responsible for the shutdown, the security, the road closures. Officers did a great job. Same thing as a street fair. Suffering day went great. Bike rodeo was this Saturday. Kathy, thanks, open us out. Helmets, I was at Picano School today. We're going to be the police department is running the bike rodeo part for the kids. We had a um, little water rescue on officers with the fire department. I just want to mention that because an, 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 one of my officers on patrol was Sergeant Smith. She was on patrol when a, a person walking on the street had flagged it down and said, I think somebody's in the water. And Mayor, you came up right with me and saw, there's no way we really saw that person where the person was without being flagged down. So we got an initial call with Danny Bankman, got down there, got the person out of the water, secured it, fire department came in. Helped us get the person up. Stepped in a bee's nest while we were down. Not a nest, uh, like a colony. Uh -huh. And uh, everybody got the hell. It's like a cartoon in about one second. Everybody ran down. So that yeah. happened. <laughs> you saw that we were watching it like a smoke bees. And, <laughs> and we had their hockey going on. Very full. Uh, season we're having full teams. Their dance is coming up. Christmas prayer, toy drive. That's on top of the normal calls. Multiple arrests. Uh, domestics. We had been three or four domestic arrests last couple of days. Some in court, as we speak, they were bringing them up. So we've been busy on top of this stuff. We're still providing the 24-7 protection and responding to calls and making stops, making stops. So we've definitely had an exceptionally busy month PDY so. But instead of repeating all the different things, I just want to give you, there you go. an overlay. And Thank if you have you. any questions, please, I'm here. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <clears throat> I have a question actually about the bike rodeo. What, what sure. age group is that aimed at? I see it, it's pretty much geared for elementary. Yeah. So, I, and all elementary kids. Yeah. We did it last three years. I think we've had kindergarten, even younger. We've had siblings that are two, three years old on little bikes, up to fifth, sixth grade. Okay. So, I think like Jack's age group, that's right up the valley. Jack's older, he's in sixth now, yeah. That's our, yeah, sixth, I'm sorry, sixth grade. But some of the kids, they, we do get a lot of kids that call the kids still. We check the bikes for them in the helmets. We, and we make sure they get the proper. Yeah, I wrote the course last year. You did? You came up with this issue, did? I had a right yeah. course. I was certified as a bike officer. I was the first one in 2004, and I was a sergeant when I had quality. I still right there doing stuff. I think it's a good service to offer for the community to get. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Janito. Good yes. Good. Good. Right, Mayor, with the first thing is a resolution amending the current budget, the 1920 budget for per capita state aid. Uh, at the time we adopted the budget, we still believed per capita state aid was going to be continued. It's not a major amount, it's $10,320, but the state discontinued, the governor discontinued, it was not authorized. So now we have the AIM, which is about 88000 we still get that, but the per capita uh, portion was discontinued by the state. And our resolution is just amending this current budget to say we're going to use fund balance to cover that difference. Uh, the next one is a uh, old capital project that had a very minor balance left on it. It was 1138 that was actually due to cover that project. And uh, we're looking to close that. It's a very old capital project, as I mentioned, uh, from 2005. So this will transfer. $1,138 from the general fund to that project and close that project out. The next resolution is uh, slightly different, but it also involves a capital project that originally was uh, 
specified for the refurbishment of water well number three, and the amount was $15,000, and we issued debt, bans, bond anticipation notes for that project, but as it turned out, as I, I spoke with uh, Stanley Dabrinsky, our um, water department head, essentially what had happened back then, well water number three, was producing um, a particular level, I, I'm not sure if it was chlorides or something else, that was too high, and they believe that by refurbishing the well in a certain way, that could fix that. It turned out that the levels got worse, and to the point where even that fix wouldn't have fixed it. The problem is that when the resolution to authorize the debt for that project was passed, it was very specific to water well number three pump. And uh, Stanley said, there isn't a need for that anymore. So since those notes were all paid off by the water fund, then that money can go back into the water fund and be used for a capital improvement through the water fund, $15,000. So this is transferring the $15,000 from the capital projects fund over to the water fund. And I'll leave it up to the um, water department head and Charles to decide if there's something they can do by the end of the fiscal year to uh, utilize that money for water improvements for system improvements. Is, is there outstanding debt underneath that? No, that debt was, no, there was only a note that was issued for $15,000. It was paid off over five years. So there's no outstanding debt at all on that. If there was outstanding debt, we'd have to transfer that money over to the debt service fund. That's what I was thinking, yeah. if it was paid off. Uh, the next one is authorizing Maria Duffy of my office and Lynn Bryan of the village clerk's office to attend the State Retirement System Seminar, October 20th. This particular seminar will bring both of them up. Lynn Bryant is involved in payroll, and Maria is involved in the, the payment of the benefits through the Treasurer's Office. So this is to be held in Pomona, New York. There's no cost for registration, so the only thing might be um, the travel back and forth, the mileage on a vehicle. And that's asking for that permission. Um, it was also listed under my agenda, the cell phone use policy, but that actually doesn't belong to me. I don't know if that's somebody else that offered that. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's not on yours. All right. Thank you. I skipped over Charles. I'm sorry, Charles. I'm reading I just rolled right over. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so we have, um, I'd like to provide an update on some projects that uh, will be starting shortly. We have the um, 2019 right-of-way uh, disturbance, I'm sorry, right-of-way improvement uh, project. That involves uh, new curbs on uh, Lancaster and some ADA ramps on Foxwood. And that um, is tentatively scheduled to start next week. Then we have the... Um, the phase 10 roadway improvement project, the milling is tentatively uh, set to start on the 14th of October with the paving of, uh, to start the following week on the 21st. The uh, Wayne Avenue uh, sidewalk and curb project currently um, actively working with the DOT to get a permit and we uh, have, uh, as, as everyone knows, we have selected a contractor so working with the contractor and the DOT to, to move that permit ahead. And let's see. So uh, there's a couple other things that came up um, this within the last week or so. One, I think uh, Moore had uh, inquired about the trees over by uh, yes by curlies. And so anyway, so we uh, have not just... curlies trees. <laughs> I, I want it to be on camera. It's not his trees. <laughs> no, 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 trees. no, absolutely. They're dead. So anyway, so we uh, we have a work order in place. We'll be taking care of that. Uh, there was some discussion and some um, apparently had the village has been approached by some community groups that may have an interest in adopting uh, various um, parking lots to keep them. Did Joe mentioned that at the last meeting. So it's something maybe the uh, the board would like to consider. Um, we can well, provide more information on that. Wasn't Joe going to give us a list of areas that he felt would be good for adopt a spot kind of thing? Well, we can, yeah, we we'll, can provide that to you, sure. I think initially he suggested the municipal parking lots. 
right? Which right, yeah, yeah. 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 So that would be yeah. helpful. In this that's, that's what we're thinking. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is that a list we can get before the meeting? Yeah, yeah, I'll get, um, I'll get together. We'll, we'll get you know, together those with. same type of trees, I believe it's the same type of trees down um, at the municipal lot by the baseball fields. There's like four or five of them dead back there, too. I noticed in that. The F lot? In the F-line? In the F-line? In the parking lot? Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of funky, funky trees. The ones on the island? Yeah, they're dead. Yeah. Okay. Or three-quarter dead. And then back along where the embankment is, I feel like there's one very tall dead tree. You said the embankment? You know, at the back there. part of the parking lot. Oh, where it goes the railroad. Through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the other, one of the other items um, that uh, came up was the restrooms. It was, uh, uh, one of the residents had uh, brought up uh, inquired about last restrooms time. last meeting, and I know more had, uh, had uh, inquired about it as well. So uh, we're going to look at doing a short-term and a long-term plan. Um, talk to, to our, you know, to Joe and see if we can get our uh, uh, manpower to get in there. Essentially, uh, initially, uh, pressure wash everything down and. Um, most likely epoxy the floor and portion of the wall, uh, you know, maybe halfway up, or we have to, you know, take a closer look at that, and then um, try to analyze uh, and, and uh, work out some type of long-term plan. What we could we, we could do in terms of either updating it, improving the uh, the appearance, the condition, or possibly even expanding it. Yeah, but it's also um, just like the regular maintenance. You know, when baseball season's in effect, those bathrooms are used constantly. And right. I guess when football season is going, they're used again. And um, it was pretty nasty. All right, well, Just we'll, uh, I saw. we'll uh, make a note of it so we can improve that situation. Like, right. is it our responsibility to keep them clean, or is it a... Well, during the, uh, the baseball season, football season, um, yeah, we, we do go in there and provide toilet paper, paper towels, and whatnot. Um, we, we do count on the baseball people to, to kind of keep it up a little bit. We do go in there, um, probably don't go in there on a daily basis. Um, you know, it comes down to, um, you know, manpower issues for the most part. I have to say, during the baseball season, the Little League, Cleans those bathrooms, cleans bathrooms regularly. Yeah, that was the other and thing that I questioned. It should be a misresponsibility, isn't it? Yeah. And yes, and, and the public work supplies the paper, mm -hmm. soap, right? Uh, right. And that, mm -hmm. but it's uh, you know, if you have an event where other people might be opening up and using them, I mean they're locked <coughs> normally, so somebody has to yeah. have the key to get in. Or right, and, and yeah, little league and uh, you know football have keys. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you know it's when you have a lot of people, you know if you have at some type of event at your house, right? You have you know quite a few people. It's it's tough to keep it up no, on door, door and, and, it, and it's also if you go there and see it, it's old fashioned. It's an old wooden, basically a shed with a toilet and a sink in it on both sides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not like what you see in a more modern prefab so recreation bathrooms. Yeah. <laughs> now, Charles, you had mentioned uh, recently a good idea as an alternative, which was uh, like a yeah, yeah, they, we, you know, we can look into that. Uh, you know, Michael just mentioned it. Um, I don't, we, you know, we'd have to ex obviously explore the cost, but um, you know, they essentially could, you know, prepare the foundation, and um, you have a crane. They lift it off the truck, drop it down in. You, you, you know, obviously connect all the plumbing and the, you know, all the trim and stuff, and you're off, right? So, I mean, that's one option. Maybe for the next next budget cycle. Yeah, yeah, we could look at uh, what the cost is and um, see if it makes sense. Yeah. I think if you're going to do anything short term, we should try to make it clear that that is a short term and that you're, we're looking at something else longer term. You know, yeah. Just like just like patching up Hillcrest, people thought, "Oh, that was it. We're not going to pave it." But no, the prefab buildings are. If that's what you're talking about, they're they're like 
they're like a house. They're built. No, they're I know that. I, I was talking about it. You said that you might go in there and we pop the floor and the lower part of the wall. So if we do that, we should just try to make that clear the public that that's a temporary. Sure. I only saw we... one side of it, but I think if it just got cleaned, got washed, cleaned, it would be fine. Okay. Well, we'll you know, I don't think anybody expects a glamorous bathroom, but it, okay. um, at least one you'd be, you know. Willing to go into. I think if you epoxy the floor, it's going to be easy to clean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that really nice. Because the maintenance will be easy to maintain. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thought. You know. Sure. Um, okay. So um, the um, item on the agenda is um, floodplain ins or flood insurance, rather, uh, for the wastewater treatment plant. So it's something that um, it, it, um, I like to be able to. See if I can get here with uh, Mike Janito and uh, Pete Karate and uh, discuss options. What what has occurred is we've gotten notice from uh, FEMA regarding a very old project that's almost 10 years old, and we have some options that we need to discuss and see what would be um, you know the best option moving forward, uh, and then make a recommendation to the board. So. Um, I can get to get with Michael and uh, I already I know uh, I think we explored that once before a couple of years ago yeah matter of fact I, I did so call Scott um, right. last know. week and it seemed like it goes back to 2012 so if we oh, were okay. yeah we, so you know all those numbers and and, uh, and has to and, be less yeah now. yeah it's more than five years so everything has to be everything has to be redone and um, you know, what we might um, need to do as well if we were going to pursue the insurance is we might, we probably would need to uh, redo the elevation certificates. That's a requirement. So although they were done back in 2012, we would uh, need to redo. That was costly also, wasn't it? Yeah, there's a cost factor to that. I don't recall exactly what it was at the time. but. Um, how do we determine the elevation certificates? Like, how many do we need? Well, this is the thing. This uh, particular issue is related to just the wastewater. So it wouldn't be other facilities, other village wastewater. facilities. It wouldn't be, for example, it would not be water treatment. It would not be the DPW garage. It would not be village hall. You know, that's because it's not in the floodplain. Is that? Well, no. It's just because of this one event from 2010. It's that's a kind of a it's a kind of a convoluted <laughs> situation. Um, so we had a we had a flood um, event in 2010. We had received about thirty under thirty three thousand dollars for that event. Um, they were just catching up on it. it somehow it was uh, originally uh, considered a, a large project, and it was re it was recharacterized as a small project. As a result of that, they did pay us immediately, but then we didn't have insurance. So it just gets it's quite quite crazy but um, something that I think we sort of virtually have two couple options to to look at and see which would be the uh, the best option for the village okay. in 2010 we weren't classified in, as being in a flood oh plane, yeah oh right? yeah oh yeah no, we're, wasn't in a flood zone and then they reclassified us to a flood plane well no it's, it was always a flood plane you probably right. maybe thinking of flood way maybe thinking of flood way because that was something that uh, pretty much was more pronounced in this last uh, mapping, which is goes back to 2014. Oh, maybe that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, okay, thanks. Uh, Fred Rella is in here, Mayor. Do you, do you have the information on the grant update for the Yeah, basically thing? it's almost $250,000. Right. We received a, a letter from or email from DASNY indicating that the payment has been sent for processing and we should receive a check on or about the September 30th. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, the attorney, the notice of the rebid for re-notice of the public hearing. Yeah. Rob? Yeah, it, um, Amy and I discussed a couple of local laws. Uh, 
One is uh, regarding time limit for uh, parking areas and provide for additional handicapped space in the central business district. Uh, the other is regarding passenger loading zones in the central business district. And the last one is about idling uh, parked vehicles in the central business district. Um, the, one, the versions that you have are going to be tweaked a little bit, but um, I forgot. I didn't realize we were this Monday. It'll be the following Monday, but we'll have a ready to roll that following Monday, and I'll discuss with Amy, and I'll send it around to everybody. Um, and that's just to set the hearing. The hearing will be that night. That'll just to set the hearing okay. and uh, circulate. Um, the Lang. Uh, matter I sent um, we set okay. right the uh, land consulting I I guess kind of in line with what uh, Rich Ellsworth was here on um, I guess the possibility of the board maybe wants to entertain the possibility of creating a floating zone or a yes so uh, John Lang has provided a um, a proposal and I think it's with all your backup documents. And uh, so if the board is interested in doing that, it's really reasonable, I think, because I think he's done a lot of the work already. Um, and then, you know, I certainly myself and, and or Ralph can work with him on uh, finalizing it. So that's what's happening. So, so that segues, segues into something else that's happening here most recently uh, occurred that the MTA is trying to, um, I guess, petition or acquire the suffering train station. So if the M MTA is, is successful with obtaining the suffering train station from New Jersey Transit, they look favorably upon economic development in villages that run along the rail and implement TODs at the same time. So the western, uh, the western portion, of the west of the Hudson portion of the MTA has, will be um, capital projects of roughly around $180 million dollars and they're looking at suffering to revamp the station if we are able to provide them some kind of detail. We already have a TOD in place. If we create another TOD or a floating zone, the walkability of the village, um, residential components, uh, safe streets component um, that we have to talk about, Kathy, that we started. Was it called safe streets? Safe Grim? streets policy. Yeah. Safe streets policy. Um, so they look favorably upon all of those different items and where the MTA would invest their dollars into refurbishing stations, making them handicap accessible. Um, so I think it's a big benefit for the village of Suffering to possibly move forward with John Lang Consulting trying to um, create a floating, floating zone or a TOD, which would show good faith to the MTA um, in regards to the village of Suffering and the economic growth and development. Right. So well, we have we have the floating zone for the TOD. Right. So you know, at least there's that. I we think have this that. is along the lines of you know, again, maybe the special permit type thing, or mm -hmm. uh, um, again, not really, a special permit that's specific to um, not that's that. the comprehensive planning and everything I just said, uh, floating zone or right. or TODs. Right, and have John uh, you know propose something that we can work with. Right. So that. Uh, that's something really to consider. So am I hearing that on Monday there should be a resolution authorizing this or no? If the board is interested, that's where it, it, it's, I think he estimated it would cost 1600 Yes, you have to, I think I have it here. Yeah, I think it was in the back. Of it. I have it, yeah. <laughs> that's a question that I provided the following proposal to create a, you guys have it, right? So, yeah. Floating zone for the village for so additional out. development as part of the transit oriented development initiative. And that was a work, 160 bucks an hour, $1,600. Um, it's something, like I said, that the MTA will look favorably upon at the same time of everything else that we have done here in the village. That may be a great benefit to the village in, in transportation and the community. So this is just really authorizing the proposal, right? Well, it's authorizing him to get started. To work on it. If he hasn't started, if we're... Now, you mentioned that uh, the MTA is looking to purchase the train station from New Jersey Transit. But what's in it, either A, for the MTA to purchase it, if it's already being essentially maintained or not maintained by another agency, or B, what's in it for New Jersey Transit to give it up? 
In other words, why would this transaction necessarily well, happen? The reason being is that New Jersey Transit operates and owns one facility out of New Jersey that happens to be the Village of Suffering train station. Yes. Right. So the MTA is looking upon it like they're not maintaining the station properly. Okay. It's not uh, handicap accessible. Now sure. we have to take taxpayer dollars that everyone pays into MTA taxes and we have to tell our residents to go to Ramsey 17 for accessibility and parking. Sure, I see what you're saying. At the same time. So, and, and tomorrow I'll be going down to the public hearing and I was invited to speak on behalf of the Village of Suffering um, along with the county exec's office to, you know, strengthen transportation here right. in, in Rockland okay. County and suffering itself. I just wanted to understand the, what's behind all this, mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay. They do pick it up from here and go all the way up to Port Jervis and MT, uh, MTA. Yeah, MTA. Yes. Right. Yes. No, I yeah. knew that suffering was part of the New Jersey side, but I just wasn't sure yeah. why well, New Jersey would want, would be willing to give it up. It we had like special it. counsel here today and, and toured with her the facility, the train station, the town, the walkability, the parking, um, the TOD, we did all of that today and tomorrow we'll be down in the down in the city of Two Broadway mm -hmm. before the committee. The full MTA committee. Sure. The full MTA board. Sounds good. Um, update on twenty seven Hillside, that's the yeah. Anzelmo property. Um, we have a trial scheduled in the Justice Court here on uh, I think it's October seventeenth. Um, after that we're successful we uh, we have certain options which we can discuss in terms of doing the cleanup again, which we've done three or four times maybe already, I don't know. Um, he, uh, if you recall, uh, the property owner filed bankruptcy right before there was going to be a tax sale in May. And today we've got some further information. Um, what happened, um, when you file for bankruptcy, you have to do certain things. There's counseling you have to go for. There are certain uh, deadlines they have to meet. And um, Legal Aid Society of Rockland County represented the property owner. Uh, they submitted papers today because the, the uh, trustee in bankruptcy was going to dismiss the bankruptcy and say he's not cooperating. Forget it. this. The Legal Aid filed a motion that gave us some information on what's going on and basically said, look, I've been trying to reach him. He finally did go to some of the counseling, a little world counseling, uh, and they asked for additional time. I checked on the website today. There's a it's called PACER website for bankruptcy or federal cases, and um, it's on for October. Those are the two dates I'm mixing up, so I'm going to get this straight. There's a meeting of creditors. I'll speak to Ralph about this on October 10th, uh, and our trial is October 17th. Uh, the, the two are not related, but there's a meeting of creditors on October 10th, so I don't know if we want to send somebody there. I really don't practice in bankruptcy court, so I don't know a lot about it, but I, don't I just don't understand it. This was the, what this statement was saying for us. How would that right. impact us? Well, that, he acknowledges that that he's not allowed to live there, and he acknowledges, you know, that he's basically what those papers say is, you know, he's living in a van or something because he's, the county's not permitting him to come on. For the village of suffering, it just means that the bankruptcy continues. So we have some judgments against them, so they can't be enforced. But more globally. Uh, bless you. It meant that um, the tax sale couldn't take place. Right. That's really that was really the the well, most benefit to the property owner when he filed bankruptcy. It stopped the tax sale. And so this would allow him to continue to hold that motion, right? Well, this the, the, the trustee of bankruptcy said, "I'm going to dismiss it." This is saying, "Please don't dismiss it." You know, he's getting his stuff and he's getting his act together, and now it's on for October 10th. What would bankruptcy mean in terms of the, the, the property? Right now it's just a delay. Um, ultimately, he'll have to owe the taxes. And, you know, again, it depends on what happens. If he gets the money and pays the taxes, pays the taxes. But um, it doesn't wipe that out. You know, ultimately, it, it's, a, it's really a matter of timing when it would be, if, if it happens. And I think I was hearing from the Department of Health that the opportunity for us to declare the property unfit for habitation is not going to move forward, right? Well, it wouldn't be us, it would be that, yeah. Right, so they're not moving forward with that, which means that though he's not able to live 
in the house, he's still able to bring items onto the property, and now we're stalled because of this. Is that well, correct? not necessarily. We can we can talk about that. I wouldn't get into all the details at this point, but it's you know, in terms of what we're doing now, um, the trial we're going to have the trial again. There's a provision in the code that we've used before where we can clean it up. We speak to the board about whether we want to go that route or another route um, in the future. Um, but you know, anticipating that he would be convicted at trial, that helps either either avenue would go down, either presenting it to the board or or going to uh, Supreme Court in the city or whatever. Are there any additional violations that have occurred in addition to the charges he's facing? Try. Well, it's the same. It's the same condition. I mean, you know, you can go it's still ongoing. Day, is that, is, is Joe, any, is that correct? Are, is he still getting violations? We're we're taking our lead from Rob. He has the same violation that continues over and over. Again. So it's a continuance of the same violation, correct. not new violations. Okay. Is are we entitled to essentially continually violate him though every day or every week or some other? You could every week. Interval? You could. It, it it complicates things in the in court. You know, because it keep, keeps going on and keeps going. So, you know, it, it, again, we haven't we've been paid. We get judgment upon judgment. All we get is money judgment downstairs, right? So, even if we violate him 20 times, you know, it's more effective to get at least the conviction on it, the current condition, and again, then, then take appropriate remedies. The court downstairs, I can point downstairs, the justice court here can go no further than fining. Mm -hmm. So, well, or community service or brief shelf time. But, you know, can't, it, it can't order him to clean it up. It can't, you know. So, you, you kind of want to, if we can, have a finding there and then kind of use that. So, ours is on the 10th and this No, is ours is on the 17th. 17th. This is, this is not, you know, it's, it's really of little significance to us. Mm -hmm. You know, other than the ancillary. You know, if the property did go for a tax sale, that would probably not be a bad thing for the village. Right. At the, same, at the same time, hypothetically now, I'm just speaking completely hypothetically, the property is, is somewhere in the neighborhood of, what, $200,000 in arrears, somewhere in that general ballpark, right? I don't think for taxes, though. What do you mean, village taxes? Well, not just village, but just... Arrears taxes overall. I, don't I think it's something. I don't, I don't know. Out taxes, taxes, you don't have to worry about out taxes. About yeah, I'm not levy. talking about what's. I understand right. that we are whole, but I'm mm -hmm. saying that Whatever as far as if is. it were to go to a tax sale, mm -hmm. the taxes that are owed on it, whoever were to buy it at such an auction, if it eventually got to that point, you know, I just can't even imagine someone wanting such a burden. Is what I'm saying. It's so far in arrears. Is my point. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't know I, if the number is that high. It could be. I, I think it's in the neighborhood. It's, I don't it's, know. It may not be exactly two hundred thousand, but it's somewhere like one hundred eighty-five thousand, something like that. It's in that ballpark, which you know, I mean, it would be a big hurdle for somebody to purchase the house for more than you know, I don't know, fifty thousand dollars or something, because they, they'd have this big expense, and then they'd still be liable to clean it up or whatever. You know, the property's in dis disrepair. It would, nobody would want such a property. Is my point. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not speaking from specific knowledge of what it would sell for or anything like that. I, I, I'm yeah. just hypoth hypothesizing, that's all. Mm -hmm. Right, and again, that would, at this point, because of the bankruptcy, that's a little further down the road, so. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, for, uh, Okay. Moira, do you have anything? Trustees uh, comments? Good? Good. Mr. Hagen? I do. It's an old uh, comment. Uh, a lot of people in where I live in Westport are talking to me about that chocolate factory, parking there 24-7. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing's ever said about it. It's very dangerous. Plus, the people that go underneath Chestnut and Double Park. So, can we get something done? Can I? Do you want me to get a petition? Do you guys want me to uh, <laughs> if, if burn the building down? Well, that, if that's yeah. referred to me. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this, Rob. Can we add that? Because we're yes. we're we're adding 
we don't have to just contain uh, the local law because it's really modifying the schedule of parking, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, what? At the area in front of the chocolate factory, which is... One round of pole or something. All right, hold on. Uh, uh, the chief, uh, so uh, the, the issue here at hand is that outside the chocolate factory on Ramapo Avenue, directly out front, that we would like to eliminate parking there. Okay. Yes. Do you see that as an issue in traffic safety where they're able to park there? No, it's, it's tra you look at traffic safety, because I'm down all the time. I actually came out of DPW today, up the hill to make a right to go down to the stop sign down on. Well, we, no, and, it, and it's you have to go around them, and you basically have to go in the other lane to get around it. Exactly. So I have no problem with that, because the reality is, you go down the rest of Ramapo Avenue, and there's no parking there anyway. Right. On the right side, or the southbound side. So that's, that's why I don't have a problem with I was going to, I have no problem with that. That's, that's really up to the board, but at a police angle, if you, basically, I, I never understood why it was there. I mean, I understood because of the business, but there's no parking on that side the rest of the way down. Right. So that was pretty and obvious. that's only me. from Paw, is that Paw? Yeah, it's from, it's from uh, Chestnut, between Chestnut, Paw, Chestnut and Park. That's it. Chestnut to Paw, no parking. Can we add that to the public hearing? Yeah, we can. We, we have a schedule a public hearing. Well, we have. I'm sorry, we, we, we have a finalized law. Is that yeah. still CB? That's GB. I don't know, see. So, but this was specific to CB. So we could talk tomorrow. Yeah. I don't know what's on that. I'm but not what sure. What we're doing is we're modifying the, mm -hmm. the schedule of what. Mm -hmm. So we could look at it like that, from expanding it to like it maybe more, more broad versus. We're doing several. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Parking. There they have a lot on Park Ave. Right. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Park Place. Park Place. West Park. And also the ball field. When you come down, make that hard left. That's their property. So you have all that gravel area. That's owned by them as well. So they have their own parking. So it's not an issue of they're not going to where to park. I'm not sure if it's customers who's out there, but I do agree. It is. It, it could definitely be a problem. You take, if you get a truck coming around, small truck, it, you have to go and even the other lane. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. absolutely do. I saw it today, too. Yeah. And Frank, to your point, we have had residents ask to. Okay, so we'll look at that and see what we can do. Yeah, we can add yeah. it. Yeah. And either make it a separate. Again, just, i got to look at the details of this because I think it was all specific to CB. If it is, we can just do a different local law. All right. Steve, I have nothing specific for today. Okay. Paul? Yeah, a few items. Um, one thing that we brought up previously, and it's kind of, I think, Frank, you're not only talking about those two parking spots, but I think you mentioned as we approached Chestnut, but um, we talked about safety concerns around the train station and the Sheldon increased foot traffic. Um, I, now that I'm actually taking the train every day, I see it even more so. I'm even more concerned about it. Um, so, I, you know, I think, I think maybe we should talk about what we want to do or decide not to do anything. But I think, you know, given that we, we didn't have workshops over the summer, I think that's part of the reason why we, um, we didn't get to talk about this sufficiently in the last couple of months. But, um, I think we should come up with some some solution around making that a little bit safer. And on the point about the MTA possibly taking over our station and investing, maybe we could look again at that walkway going over our jab. I expressed that today to the special counsel that we were with. Mm -hmm. um, they said that was something in regards to uh, ridership. Like the number of passengers or the number of uh, users, mm -hmm. that's how they base that decision on building like overpasses and underpasses and mm -hmm. the necessity, the need for it itself. But we did discuss that. It was a very valid point. Um, and going back to safe streets that Kathy and Nancy had um, spoke about maybe last month we met. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's something that we should look at a little more closely. Traffic calming and safe streets, which the MTA would also look favorably upon. Yeah. 
So the whole time he's into. Do we have any kind of numbers of the passengers uh, embarking, disembarking from the southern train station? No, we don't. I don't, but uh, we were talking about that also in regards to the ridership, like NJT would have that information, they would know. We were clearly a, you know, a major hub on that one. Right, so a lot of times we have to send people to Ramsey, uh, Ramsey 17 for accessibility, for parking, you know, and more convenience. Our so, parking statistics have increased considerably, but we don't know necessarily because people could be walking, could be dropped off, could be mm -hmm. on a bike. So we can't say yeah. for sure yeah. what the ridership is. Just from the parking. Yeah. But that's part of the safety issue is there's like, a lot of people walking. Right. There's a lot Paul's of people getting picked up right. underneath the trestle there. Um, you know, people are free to just walk across there. Um, also, I did recommend a parking study, but I guess two months ago, and Bruce actually made mention that we um, had parking studies conducted and traffic surveys, and we did pull all of those out. And the newest one was probably, I would say 2010, 2012. So it's, you know, it's seven, eight years, ten years old already that, you know, the undertake. And look at that, that might be something we should look at. Or just start with the safe streets, see what safe streets recommends, to be a safe street community, and then take it from there if necessary, do with traffic or parking. Um, study and if you can isolate it into areas or do you know the the CB zone itself and the C CB and the GB you know but uh, you're right I mean the Sheldon's you know gradually filling up and mm -hmm. you know I see people just going down the stairs and walking right across and scaling that gray wall which to me is insane but people do it I mean. Charles didn't we talk about once putting up a fence a barrier on, under the under the trestle to yeah, prevent we, uh, people from crossing. Yeah, the brief discussion on that on what we could do. And the guardrails. Yeah, it right. seems like uh, we might be limited on what we can do, but I'm sure we can come up with something. The other thing is since you know, since you are talking about this now, um, as part of our um, right of way uh, improvement project, I did throw a ADA ramp on Chestnut. So I have, if we if we did come up with some, though we'd have to make a decision quickly because mm -hmm. the contract is going to be coming in the next few couple weeks. Uh, I did have um, one ADA ramp on Chestnut that we, if we could identify a location within the next couple weeks, week and a half or so, we could have that as part of this contract. And what about, and I know we spoke about it, I don't remember what it was, Chief, maybe you could help us out, with the crosswalk on Chestnut, somewhere in the vicinity of Sheldon, toward yeah. the park. I, mean, I think yeah. the, the issue right there was, I think, I think Paul, I think we saw about this, I believe. I mean, the issue, I think, the biggest issue, crosswalks are supposed to, I believe, have an opening when you, like if you're walking down, like if you go on Washington Avenue by um, Morpia, and just put the one over there. Basically, there's a ramp that comes out like a the sidewalk will have a curb cut. Oh, sorry, curb cut. Right. And we'll have a curb cut. But that was one of the second issue was visibility. Because this thing when people have asked for stop signs on Maplewood coming around the bend, if you don't have the proper visibility to the stop sign, you're going to cause more of an issue. Because someone's going to come around and get a false sense of security, walking across and get clipped because the people are not going to be able to see the stop sign that quick. I think that was the issue. Right. As you come up onto the bridge, Mayor, That's right. it's tough to see. There's a lot going on. That bitch, but I agree, Paul. We watch it tilt. People come out of the building, they shoot right across the road. If there's any kind of uh, a barrier, which I think would be like, I, I think we're going to have a community policing standpoint. Any way we can basically do, um, have them go without what's coming down a barrier would make it much easier for us. Just make it simple. I think we have to sort of guide them, which they go, right. if we have nothing, Paul's like, they're just going to keep taking off. Yeah. And we're not going to be able to stop unless we have somebody standing there and just come to get to them. I think that's the easiest to any kind of barrier we can use or, or think of that would be awesome. Could we actually look at, since we've been receiving so many complaints of PD, look at um, traffic conditions and parking conditions on Chestnut yeah. in particular, of course. in and around the, from, I don't want to single anyone out, but from Lafayette to uh, Pat Malone Drive. Yeah, you're talking about, man, you're talking about the, the 
more, better utilize the parking you're saying, or what are you what are you looking for? I'm looking for uh, any, uh, double parking, illegally parked cars, yeah. parking and the loading, uh, no standing zone, the fire zone there, yeah. and uh, the the loading zone. Next. Absolutely, because it's funny. I, today, the first time I saw it, I'm, and I'm down every day. I saw my truck past Tiger Chef, go down and park down by the ball field, and use the portable jack, I guess, like a whip, and walk the stuff back. Up there, up under I the never back, saw under the... Never saw it. Right. <laughs> I never he saw must it. Got, he must have got a summons over there. Then. I think he, I, Learned we, his we, lesson. We hit him. I know we hit him, so. Yeah. I'll go up there soon, that's what happened. That's my yeah, they're, they're, they're pro some of the trucks park on the wrong side of the road. Right. Totally. totally. We, we, we've actually worked several, when they park on the wrong side of the road, they had a ticket. We've been telling them, we do give them a warning, I think it's fair to give them a warning the first sure. time I explain. You can't do this. And then at that point, they come back, they're going to get it. They want to seek compliance. That's all we're trying to do. Okay. Once again, for safety, because you come up under the bridge, mm -hmm. you got a truck near the lane, it's dangerous as it is coming up. And you're swerving up the lane, chest that as tight as it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. You get a couple of cars on each side, it's tight. Mm -hmm. right. Does right. anybody know where um, the school buses pick up for like anybody that lives on? That part of Chestnut or lives in the Sheldon. I mean, are they picking up on Orange or are they picking up? I'm going to say, you know, it's funny you said that. I just had a discussion today with the school district called me something else. They asked about the Sheldon, about the, how many kids come out there. Not many kids, though. So I believe, if there is, I think it's Orange Ave. I don't think they're coming up there. I don't think so. It's, and I, I can find that out because I just helped with something else today, another issue. And if the school bus used to stop outside the parking authority on yeah, Chestnut. Right. That's pretty much they stay right. off the right. right. They'll go to the West Ward. Right. And I think they may stop at Chestnut as you make the first turn like maybe the other route. But I don't think they're not my target ship on. But I can check that too about every one of I'm thinking that, you know, if, if if we did think we needed a crosswalk yeah. across Chestnut, maybe it's a school crossing and maybe it's got a flashing yellow flashing light with a yellow sign that says, you know, school crossing and maybe People are uh, more apt to respond to that and slow down a little bit. I'm just, I'm just I mean, trying we to probably have to lose a couple of parking spots on both sides to give that visibility to yeah. put the crosswalk in. I mean, it's something to look at. I mean, things like that. Well, I was one of the things, that, and I don't know the practicality or feasibility of it. Probably that's the question Charles by us. But like with the when you're going up, blow the way where the where you make the right, you want to do the bridge, you go up the ramp. That little. Uh, Fence there. If there's any way you able to pull that back more up the street a little bit, I don't know the practicality. I just was thinking I was down there. That would stop them with Boston from coming out and running across because there's a barrier you can't. Right. And that's the kind of thing I think we need. And I don't know. I've never really measured it. I mean, I, I just I was just thinking of a common sense mark. Just and I don't know if we can, but that may be something at least to look at. You know. What I mean? That's DOT. Right, that wing wall, Charles, is DOT on, yeah. on the yeah. opposite side, yeah, on both sides. Right. But the sidewalk, the sidewalk under the trestle is ours. Is that ours? Um, that's, yeah. <laughs> good question. It's a, it's, a, it's a good question. I would say it, it is our responsibility, yeah. Right. yeah. We, yeah. Shall, we, sh we shovel it, right? Yeah. yeah. We maintain yeah. it. We maintain it. And so if we had to repair it or replace it, right. Um, do you know that for certain? I don't know that for certain, but, but yeah, it, yeah would be, I, I, I would say like that we, we want to maybe first check with uh, New Jersey Transit um, to see. See if it's the village or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the road is the village or something. Right. The right, wall right. and not. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, it's part of the right of way, you know, that because the road and the right of way going through there. So, it, it's a little bit gray. It could be a little bit gray. You know, we need to look at that more closely. Um, so th th those are the, I think those are the easiest. I'm not saying, I think they're the most practical solution, but I, need to I don't know who owns what. I'm just looking at it. And whether we, like we talked, Charles and I talked about this a while ago about some kind of barrier on the, um, I guess it would be the east side, which would be the side on the, as you're coming down Chestnut to the left. Right. If any kind of bar barricade or barrier for the sidewalk, can be brought up, then you can't, you can't go over and get in there. I'm just thinking if, the only way I think it's going to practically work, we did this with the traffic comedy, we did this stuff all the time in different areas we have to look at, just the way you set things up is going to determine how it's going to go. 
you know, to come. All you have to the, do is direct the flow of people and they'll follow it. it exactly. Right. Unless they're going to climb over the fence. They're in traffic. Course. We have a problem. Right. right. We sense. Yeah. So let's look into that, Charles. Let's yeah. see if we can do that. I mean, how? what's the length of, is it 100 feet maybe? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't think it's much more. Well, what that. fence yeah. are they jumping? Mayor, the school bus well, picks up on the top of Blawville on the right corner. That wall fence? That's what just uh, Tex Cliff, the fence. owner of yeah. the, the manager, uh, picks up the top of Blawville on the right corner. I just asked them if they come up no, I didn't Chestnut see or fence. Orange Turnpike. I'm waiting for them to go. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, I, look, it's getting darker and earlier and earlier. I mean, we're asking for a problem now that you know the Sheldon is open. It's getting more and more populated. I mean, I think we're just asking for trouble here. No, let's look at the sidewalks. Yes, all right, we agree. Let's let's look at the sidewalks. The width of the sidewalk, some type of barrier. Maybe some more lighting. I mean, let's we just put in the new lighting. No, they did. And Miss Sam, we're gonna take a look at the spotlight subject. Maybe a little more. I, I can take if you want. I mean, all right. I'm just all that. It's just it is dark. I mean, it's very light, but it's the people walking. It's gonna. I think the uh, concern there, because we had talked about adding more light, and I think the concern was the positioning of the light because of traffic won't blind any traffic coming down there. So something you need to look at closely. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah, it will make visibility worse. You know where it gets a little okay. dark is by the stairs because you've now gotten past the underpass, the stairs yeah. over there. There's mm -hmm. really, if you could put lighting there somehow. Just I mean, let's take, let's take a look at it, take a look at the lighting and then actually the, the, the fencing or the railing, yeah, whatever so, uh, I call it, the barrier. Just, just a thought, is um, would we be able to get reimbursed from New Jersey Transit or? We can look into that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ramapo recently issued a policy of no vaping in mm -hmm. public places. Uh, which I thought was a good move. Does that cover all the public places here, or do we have to add, ex add you know, extend? I mean, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, clearly marketing to kids, all these flavors, it's 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 turning out to be very dangerous. Um, I, I think it would be a good idea for us to kind of replicate that here if it's not covering all of our public places. So yeah, I think uh, that I was thinking of, along the same lines of smoking, because it wouldn't vaping wouldn't be covered under the smoking local law, like smoking in the building, and mm -hmm. right. So we just have to mimic the local law for for vaping. Right. Is that right. something that we could look into? Sure. That's very similar just to smoking. Yeah. But it's not smoking; it's vaping. Right. right. It's not covered. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then nothing to take action on, but um, Ed, you and I talked about this uh, one on one before, but maybe we should consider um, next summer maybe not canceling two workshops. Mm -hmm. It seems like we probably need to meet. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe that's one, one or maybe, yeah, maybe maybe shifting where that one is that we keep. But that's, again, nothing to decide on now, right. just to throw it out there. Right. That's all I got. Okay. Sounds good. Anybody else have anything else? So we have the um, some discussion on the special permit application for the dog kennels at 11 Wayne Avenue. Yes. So I have some concerns in regards to the that permit. Um, first of all, once again, was there was there available parking? Um, there's pre-existing non-conforming residential there. Should it be publicly noticed? Um, was the GML properly um, submitted to the county? They, they did not include any of the maps. They did not include uh, the referral form. There was no narrative, um, no cover letter. So I think we really just have to revisit that and make sure that we proceed in the right direction and with the county. And I'm not sure about noticing the public, even though it's in the GB, 
there's still pre-existing non-conforming residential in that zone does that will that impact those residents I don't know any thoughts no what do you say Joe I think, it will. I think it'll have a negative impact on both across the street and to the left in addition to where are the where's the feces and the urine going to go? Right. There is no property, even if they created a space. You're talking about all day, every day. If the apartments weren't there, uh, you know, there there are auto shops. Um, it's just something for the board to think of. Is is the urine and the feces? It's you know, there's a reason why they're set. When you go to Chestnut Ridge, you go to other places that have these. They're on land. They're you know they're not on a postage stamp. They're they they have land to them. They, you know, urine and feces in the hot summer days gets to be even cleaning up the feces. The urine. I mean, everybody's had a, had an animal. Right. You can't. You know, it's something to think about. Um, the the land that they do have is very very small. Um, you know, it, again, it's that this is a tough call for the board. I, I don't envy. Um, there, there, are, there are three legal non-conformings across the street. There are four next door. Um, those are the closest. So there's that thing about, and then the daytime businesses that operate there. Um, you know, it's an old building. Noise is gonna, you know, noise is gonna get up there again. It's, it's just something to think about. And once again, parking would be another issue. Parking would be. They do have the bus, you know, there, there are some spaces with something like this, you do get a heavy drop-off pickup, uh, not, not, you know, a lot of, of hanging out, so to speak. Um, there are some, but if it does get busy, you know, you, there, that's an active bus behind it is the active bus road. In the front of it is Route 202. So is there an access point up. into the building from the back? There is. It would be difficult for them to make that for the public. It, it would be difficult for them to make that for their patrons, I should say. Um, it used to be basically an old garage access somewhat. Uh, the other main access point would be through the neighboring building. Who used to own or possibly still does uh, own the building? Now, whether or not he you know, allows them to use it, the general public couldn't. The only real entrance for the building for the people dropping off would be from 202. They would have to park in the back, walk them around. Um, they could maybe park on the side for quick, but PD There's no may, parking there. No, mm -hmm. PD right. may run issues, right? So I mean, they could park in the municipal lot and walk up. I mean, they could. They it's could. not that far. Correct. I mean, we know how lazy people are. We do know how lazy people are, but I think you know again, it, it's it's a tough, it's a tough decision. Did, did any of that, your comment about the feces, did any of that feedback go back to them to see what they're I, I to brought do with up that? the feces with them, and of course they would pick up the feces, um, you know, and, and obviously dispose of it properly on um, the urine. So they would walk the dogs outside and they just pick it up? No, they would, they would pick up the feces is as far as we got. They, they're not a, the, the, the interesting thing is they're not claiming to be a, a walking service they're a grooming and boarding service um, you know again there's a very small I suggest honestly personally I suggest taking a look at the property maybe before making yeah, this familiar with it. grooming obviously there's usually there wouldn't be any feces or urine associated with the grooming side of it but correct if, but yeah, if, if they're boarding if, right. if it was sort of that's mandated, their main right the boarding. Right, boarding if it was sort of I'm just throwing some not in favor or against I'm, I'm just you know, hypothetically saying, if they were mandated that they could not walk the dog on that property but had to, you know, go in the neighborhood sure. like a normal dog situation right. of a homeowner, that might alleviate that issue. Sure. Absolutely. There's, it's a special use permit, so there's plenty of stipulations that could be put on it. That's a beautiful part that the planning board could, uh, or the village board could put as, I mean, Rob would be the, the you know, one to ask about that, but I believe you could put as many stipulations as possible. Or as you wanted, I should say. I mean, I, I think that seems like a no-brainer. If the pro I, I'm not familiar with the exact size of the property, but if it's too small to walk and have you know a dog on that property, make it 
that they cannot walk a dog. On Absolutely. Property. Absolutely. They'll need to walk their dogs. Sure. You know, it's just part of taking care of a dog. You need to walk it. Sure. Right? And and possibly a you know something to think about is their own um, their own refuse service where our guys are not picking up you know feces all day every day mm -hmm. from that place. Mm -hmm. You know, they right. may. Again, it, it's well, something you might have to pick on that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, legally we need to pick I mean, bags full of no, it is what I mean. Yeah, yeah that's the they'll, predominant they'll waste that she right. done. Yeah. Right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, I think we want to talk to you about that. What you can do in terms of the documentation and additional requested. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I definitely feel like, if, you know, if they can overcome those other things, you know, that would be important in the consideration, that's all. And it would be, it would be a good service for the village. There, there isn't one close, and it, right. you know, right. jump from, yeah. it would be. I, 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 I don't see it, I don't see, uh, you know, negative, except, except what you pointed out there. That was a very big point, but if they could be mandated not to walk on the property, I think sure. The biggest negative is whether the dog's going to be walking all night. Well, yeah. talking, right. But he talks about all the residents. That's that's, that's yeah. the biggest negative. There are that's people yeah. that live right next. Exactly. Not, it's not my building he's talking about. There are building that lit that li they live right. seven eight yeah. feet away from yeah. that from that yeah. dog barking. Yeah. Dogs barking yeah. Yeah. and across the street. It's not and it's not my building. All right. That's the biggest issue. Okay. Is whether they're going to be kept up all night. You're going to have the cops being called every five minutes <laughs> to shut the dogs up. Huh? Hey Joe. That the business on uh, Lafayette down by Suffolk Food Mart? Ford Diva. Ford Diva. Is that, that's Grooming not only. Boarding. Not boarding. Grooming only. There's yeah. no the only problem with uh, any no. of that. The, only, the I, only area okay. that, group, that boarding is allowed is in the GB. Um, and, and again, the, the code is specific as far as the proximity to, to residents. Okay. I feel like I remember her stating it was more that she wanted to be a training facility and that those dogs that were being trained would be staying and that there would not be um, supervision at night. Oh. Unsupervised dogs? They'd leave them there? We were yeah, told like boarding. you would any other I don't know. kennel to animal. Yes. Yeah. That there wouldn't, I seem to remember that. Wow. Okay. That there wouldn't be anyone there at night. Except the barking dog. Except the barking Correct. Dog. And Correct. The, and oh, the yes, there would, there would uh, I apologize, I didn't understand what you're saying. Maura, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be permitted to stay there at night. It's a commercial business. Um, you know, it's, it's not a mixed-use business. They, you know, I, I mean, that would be a whole different ball game. There couldn't, in other words, the animals would be there unsupervised in the evenings in kennels. Correct. Uh, do, they, do they plan on overnight boarding? Overnight, overnight boarding, yes. Board. And the boarding for, would for the be the their training. primary use. Okay. The the um, grooming would be secondary to the board. Mm -hmm. Was what we were told. Okay. So that's a consideration as well. Any further? Next, I have a resolution here amending the 2019-2020 general fund budget to transfer funds from outside data processing and books and references to overtime for village clerk's office. You have the um, the resolution in front of you. Anybody have any questions? Wasn't this the one that, Jim Ralph, didn't you pull this one back? No, not this one. What was D then? Wasn't it D you were pulling back? Yeah, that was a different one. Not this. So I didn't get to read this one because we, uh, we got this agenda fairly delayed than usual. So this is, um, so what's driving this? It says, we reduced staff by 1.5 employees. Right, so we lost Virginia, and we Kathy's working half time. Oh. So we're not able to close the window earlier than the 
to close out the books. That's what we initially thought that we'd be able to do. Let me ask a question though. Why does accepting payments, for example, to the end of regular business hours create overtime? Why would that be an overtime scenario? President, regular business hours are at four. Yes. So in order to close out the 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 box, the money, yes. they have to stay after the four. I see. To continue counting whatever. Right. Okay, I got you. Okay. Is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? That would only be during certain times of the year, though, that this would be necessary, like during tax yes. season. Mm -hmm. Tax season and water bill collection. Yeah. Okay, at this time, I'd like to motion, I make a motion to go into an executive session um, to receive legal advice and counsel subject to the attorney-client privilege and to discuss personnel matters regarding a particular person or persons. I make the motion. I'm sorry. Before, do we need to cover this one? No, but you can review it. We can we can all review it. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. It was sort of uh, just we blend it in there. There was a cell phone policy. So we had to create a cell phone policy. That was a recommended cell phone policy. Yeah. Can you stay in the room? Yeah. See you later. I'd like, I'd like us to stay here. Yeah. Yes. 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 Was there a vote? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the motion, I, I Paul, Frank, Frank, motion. I'll second it. More of a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, will there be any action? There will be no, no action. No action. No, there'll be no official action. Other than coming out of the executive session and closing the meeting. Right.